Last November, the Laura Flanders Show was in New Orleans for TED Women, a convening of some of today's most innovative creators, thinkers, and doers, all speaking under the banner of the events theme this year, Bridges. Our next guests were there, aptly enough, speaking in a session titled Connect. Deborah Willis is a photographer, a prolific one. She's published upwards of 20 books of her work and is viewed as a kind of icon in her field, covering everything from the history of black photography to the Obamas. At a time when photography and the arts in general were largely dominated by white males, Willis emerged as something of a phenom. And if you already find out that you know her work, you'll understand why in a moment. She's a recipient of the MacArthur and Guggenheim Fellowships and chair of the Department of Photography and imaging at the Tisch School of the Arts at NYU. And the talent in that family doesn't end with her. Her son, Hank Willis Thomas, is a renowned artist in his own right, working in photography, video, and installations with a similar focus on identity, history, and popular culture. His work's been exhibited around the world, too, including the Guggenheim Bilbao, the National Gallery of Art in DC, and the Museum of Modern Art right here in New York City. I had a chance to talk with them both together. Take a look. This is our sixth talk together. It's um, funny because it's like role reversal. He is now my father at times, and I'm, I'm trying to um, guide him through. But he's it's it's humorous and it's fun, and I'm enjoying it. I was interested in becoming a photographer even in high school. Told by a, a guidance counselor it was impossible. She laughed at me. I went to a junior college and then ended up going to my art school that I wanted to attend, Philadelphia College of Art, to study photography. As a result of that experience, I was excited about making images. And then I had one professor who decided to, another one, to put a damper on my interest of being a photographer and said, that was taking up a good man's space and I should be, all I was going to do was have a baby and I decided I wasn't going to let him stop me. And I started making photographs about my experiences as a photographer living in Philadelphia. And I did get pregnant the next year. And, and it really, it just made me step, pause for a second, just to think about the negative experience of what it meant that a man could tell a woman's body that it's, it's wrong to get pregnant, it's wrong to have a dream to be an artist. And so it affected me in a, in a way that I decided to just photograph my pregnant belly and my body changing over time. I learned actually through osmosis a lot of the history of photography through my mother's research as an artist, but also as a curator at the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture and then at the Smithsonian. And, and I would just be a kid playing in the stacks and doing things that probably you shouldn't do around archival <laughs> material. but. Uh, I think it was also kind of, I was absorbing a lot subconsciously. I like to read the family album. I love to look at the way that the women were dressed. I love the inscriptions. So I think the family album is really a central way for us to know about our memories and to tell stories. Later on, I realized that in the larger society, no one actually looked at black families as a central way of knowing a sense of being or a sense of existence. In 1968, during the Memphis Sanitation Workers' March, a photographer, African-American photographer named Ernest Withers, photographed dozens of protesters holding signs that read, I am a man. And I always reflected on that image with curiosity because there was a statement of collectivity when people were fighting segregation and after integration, it seemed to be a, a boastful statement in saying, I'm the man. And I felt that there was progress in being able to be an individual, but also things that are lost when we don't see the benefits of collective struggle. The importance of, of post-slavery period, creating their own biography, their own autobiography. I want to tell a story about my existence, my existence with my two children, three children, my existence in terms of style of dress, my existence of being free. Photographers were significant in making that statement. Um, 
it was an opportunity for blacks to marry for the first time. They were legally able to vote. Men were legally able to vote, um, some in, in some parts of the country. And so it, it brought this sense of humanity back. And I think photography was central in terms of recognizing that sense of humanity and, and memory in that way. It was really significant for me to know that one of the earliest photographers who brought photography to America was a black man, unknown in my history books of, of photography. Jules Lyon, he had a daguerreotype studio here in, in New Orleans. In 1840, he, was, he had a studio um, on Charter Street. So um, thinking about that, it was important because the absence of the discussion of black photographers, the absence of black people who had businesses and, and families, people think that uh, black people did not have a sense of desire outside of being the servant or the um, stoop labor in terms of that period. I'm writing a book about the black Civil War soldier and I didn't know that there were black Civil War soldiers when I was in high school. I found images of you know, my great, great uncles who were in World War I and the sense of pride that happens in looking at family photographs because pride was denied for black people when we visualized images of black people through the lens of racist photography. Within my mother's work, I th one of the things that I think really had a profound effect on me was this idea of the camera being a tool of the sitter. Her image was an opportunity for, it was her I am, a way to stake a claim and to represent herself in spite of the way that there were caricatures and other ways that uh, stories of people of African descent were being uh, disseminated. And I think I'm always trying to bring the past present with my work. I'm really interested in learning lessons from the past and trying to kind of make statements in the now that ranges from sculptures that I've made based off photographs at the fall of the Berlin Wall. There's another photograph by a photographer named Ernest Cole of miners being strip searched in South Africa in the 1960s. And I wanted to represent it, but I wanted to crop it. And so I represented it as a sculpture and I cropped it at their shoulders. And you could just see the heads and their arms up. And I titled it Raise Up. And in the summer of 2014, Michael Brown was murdered by a police officer. And the cry by the public was, hands up, don't shoot. And my sculpture spoke very, very eloquently and clearly to people who were fighting for human rights and equal rights in the 21st century. My project is In Search of Beauty, and it's, it's not any specific look. It's just in, in terms of just a way of understanding who we are as a people looking for that. And so I'm looking now at friends who are traveling and looking at their cl closets because the same aspect in terms of how do we think about, re about identity through clothing and thinking about how do we respect or understand who we are through dress.